What is up, YouTube? Another fun day in the garage. So, here's the status. There's stuff everywhere. Cylinders are done on this Honda CB350 motor. All powder coated. Same thing with the head and the or, uh, uh, valve cover. And the little breather. Went with a nice, simple silver. Kind of keep it stock looking. But, going to have a lot more durability. A lot more strength on there. So this is the goal for tonight. I'm going to finally get around. I've been saying it in every video, but finally going to get around to cleaning up the rest of the mating surfaces on the motor. The cylinder's already prepped. <clears throat> I don't know if I'm going to get into the head. I'm going to try and reassemble the head tonight, but again, time constraints, and it's way later than I wanted to be out here. I got the iron head bin, <clears throat> my complete, complete iron head motor. That I'm gonna have to start jamming on and most importantly I finally got my other case back from the machine shop for that motor so that one I left at the shop today uh, I just ground down some of the excess stuff on there not any of the aluminum welds aesthetically it's not going to be nearly as pleasing to the eye but it's a repaired case and I'm proud of having a repaired case it's fine it'll work I've been doing it for years so that one is sitting at the shop gonna get blasted and coated so you'll see a stock blasted aluminum finished powder it's just a lot easier to set them up that way because when i get around to doing a blasted set of cases well when you touch them for reassembly and have assembly lube or oils all over your hands it doesn't soak into the pores of the aluminum when they're coated just grab a rag and wipe it down it comes right off it's a beautiful thing got the dogs helping out today or just making a giant mess bailey she don't care and shovel's bouncing around, so let me get started. I'll set you guys up on the tripod, turn you around, and then we're going to start jamming away on degreasing and cleaning up the bottom end of the case on here. Like I said, haven't done the oil change yet. Everything's going to get drained out of the crankcase, so I don't really care if I'm spraying brake fluid or gasket stuff falls in there. Everything's going to come out. I'm going to try and keep the big parts out, obviously, but brake fluid's not going to hurt it. It's all going to get fresh oil anyway. We got the motor sitting here couple ways to do this like I said it was nice all of the gasket surface came off so I don't really have all that much to do in terms of cleaning up and prepping this I am gonna hit it with a scraper real quick and just kind of knock some of the high spots off like I said around these studs just kind of knock off any of the residual a million options and a million different ways to do this but I'm going to stop talking and just keep working on this, and then we'll uh, speed you guys up and come back when we're all done.
Okay, so wiped everything down on the motor. The timing chain's kind of a pain, but we're gonna have to keep moving this back and forth. I am gonna throw a zip tie on this just so I have a quick, easy access pull to move it when we put these cylinders on. I got the pistons all ready to go. If I think when I did the, uh, I don't know if it was the piston ring video or the disassembly, I took out the little clips on all of these. So now I need to take them out again because I'm gonna throw the pistons on first. To me, this makes a little bit more sense in the grand scheme of things because, well, I don't want to have assembly lube on all of these things prior and then have to wrestle around with a bunch of greasy pistons. So pop these all out real quick, then I'll get them, uh, I'll, we'll come back to a little snap ring, put it in, pry it up out of the groove, work your way around it. Little flathead works really well here too but it's just a C-clip essentially. There's no crazy way to go about doing this. Just gotta get it up and out of the groove. A curved pick works a lot better. So let me retool, pop this out, I'll show you what they look like, and then we'll come back when we're ready to start putting these on the motor. One sir clip removed on all of these. Now we're ready to start dropping these in order on the cylinder. I did scuff a little one, two, three, four. I don't know if you can see that real fine little scratch on the top. One, here's three, two, and four. Just to keep everything in order. Now we can drop these onto the connecting rods and I'm going to start with one, which is over here. So I'm going to set all of the pistons on first. Uh, how do I want to do this? No, I'm going to start in the middle. I think that might actually be a little bit easier on me. So we'll start with number two. Number two. On the crown of the piston, they're also marked. So right there you have an IN for in. Exhaust is not, but IN is intake. So this is going to go onto the motor this way the intakes are on the back side. So if we're starting there, we need to move this. Intake towards the back. Yeah, we'll do a little bit of assembly lube on this. Not gonna go too crazy. I didn't de hardcore degrease or clean up the piston, so there's a ton of oil on this. You can probably see that slick film. But we'll, just for good measure, load up the connecting rod a little bit, right through the top. There's also a ton of oil still on the connecting rods themselves. I'll just do one little splash here for good measure, and that'll walk itself around. If you fill the hole on the connecting rod, then you should be okay once you slide all of these through. I don't want to go crazy on the assembly lube because I absolutely hate how sticky this stuff is. And then I'm just using a 3 8 punch, 3 8 drive punch. Uh, it's tapered, but this outer collar is big enough to just press small enough to go through the ring big enough to put push the connecting rod pin through and now come around over here don't know how close I'm gonna be able to get or the light but here's those um, here's a little seat that's exactly what I didn't want to do here's the C clip these tiny little snap C-clips. 
These just need to go into the side of the piston and make sure they lock into the groove. So, hopefully I can do this without dropping any, because that would be embarrassing. Let's see if I can get a piston up a little bit higher. So when I do this, I also like to pull the piston all the way over. In this case, we're putting it on the right side from where you guys are looking, my right. So I'll pull the piston all the way over and then push this through just to lock that thing back in place. And this is the part I hate because I have not giant hands, but pretty big hands. And this sucks. So for this, I actually want a screwdriver. That's going to give me a little more like leverage. Set one side into the snap ring groove. And these pistons are actually really nice in the sense they do have a little notch here. I keep constant pressure on this because I do not want to drop this in the motor. But get one side started. They're notched at the bottom, so there's your little pry mark. Pry that up, push in, make sure it's in the groove, and that's it. So that's number two. Let's go to one now. Uh, how do I have this set up? Are these all set up this way? They are. All right. We'll do number three because I think I can still get to that. I was trying to avoid. I really should have started here. If I need to flip the pins, I might put the pins back in and then take the other side out so I have room right on the outside instead of um, trying to come in with the piston there. So realistically, we'll do one next. I don't know if that made any sense at all. It would make more sense. Eh. Indecisive today. Very, very indecisive today. Let's do three. Little dab of assembly lube. Like I said, I'm not going crazy, crazy, because everything on this motor is still oiled. Even that's way too much. Hopefully this will work. If I don't have room, I will have to go back to doing what I just said I was going to do and flip the pin, but I think we'll be okay. I think i got enough room if we stagger that off a little bit. Alright, snap ring. I will try and go this way. Hate the inner, inner cylinders because the studs get so close on this part. Snap rings in. Where did I put my screwdriver? Get down into the groove. Now you can see how tight it gets in here. So we're going the opposite side here. I'm not going into the groove. I just put pressure on it to get it in. Like that. Hopefully you guys heard that snap. But that's exactly what we want. And these other ones should get a little bit easier. Go back to number one. I'm going to have to rotate the crank again. One drop there, and we'll just lube up number four, too. Kick that up as high as it'll go, give myself the most room possible. Now we're ready to drop this one in, intake side is in the back.
Okay. You guys won't be able to see this. Well, it doesn't really matter. There we have it. Pistons are back in. Make sure that all your intakes are lined up. Just double check now while you can. And then we get to wrestle around the cylinder. So let me clear off a little bit more room on the bench. And uh, then we'll come and drop the jugs on. 